We have a new guest joining us in the studio. Her name is Aseka Aswani. Aseka is a career coach. She is also the Dean of Students at the Nairobi Institute of Technology. Good morning, Aseka. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation. Thank you so much. I feel hot already. Already? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah a good sure. ride. Yeah. The final conversation of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. To usher us into a lovely Thursday. City. Mm -hmm. Please welcome our with the race proverb. Yes. Mm. Our proverb for today comes from the country of Mali. It's a gender reveal. Yes. Gender uh, reveal proverb. Kabisa. And uh, <laughs> all our proverbs for the whole of this week have been from the country of Mali. Uh, this proverb is quite profound. I want you to listen very carefully. Uh, I'm listening. If it is not a boy, it will be a girl, says the fortune teller. <laughs> 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 all right. What do you make of that proverb? Is that black or white? Hmm? It's going to be black or white, no gray areas. Mm. If it rains, it rains. If it pours, it pours. Hey, that's a very interesting interpretation, wouldn't you say, Eric? Nothing in between. Nothing in between. Say the day or night. Yes, yes. Not vugu vugu. Nope. <laughs> it's hot or cold. Yes. Okay. No lukewarm in between. Is that what they? You think that that's what they meant I with this proverb? So what are they? What's the message that they're com that they're communicating? Um, I would think that it wasn't supposed to be a boy or girl situation. Mm. I would think there's something deeper to it. It would be very vague if it was just a... An obvious yes, thing an like obvious that. an obvious thing eh? like that, yeah. So what, what do you think that deeper meaning would be? The deeper meaning would be in any situation. For example, um, it's darkest mm. before dawn, you mm. know. Like if it's dark, it's dark. If it's light, it's light. And you have to take situations as they are. So you don't overthink it. Okay. So let's not overthink the problem. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we are not in Mali. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, Seka, you are a career coach. What's yeah. a career coach? Is that like um, this is your career? Yes. As a um, coach? I am the like you say, a career footballer. So my career is, is being a career mm. coach. Mm. Okay. Let me let me work backwards with this. Um I am the dean of students at Nairobi Institute of Technology, yeah. With that I deal with students' affairs and matters public relations. In the years that I've served there, I have interacted a lot with students. And the career coach beat comes in whereby um, you start to realize it's not about enrollment only. You have to dig deep and understand what a student who wants to pursue higher education is looking for. If you're chasing numbers, it doesn't come in. You come in and say, I want to do secretarial course, and you enroll and start. So being a career coach is whereby you try to understand why do I want to do this course? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Is it a good fit for me? That way, when you understand someone's background, what they liked, the subjects they liked, how they performed, you're better placed to advise them on what they can, um, they can thrive in or not. So they're not misdirected <coughs> or misguided in what to do. Mm. Yes. This is presupposing that uh, not many people actually understand these things. Yes. You just know that you want to be. You don't know what you want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this comes from many, many myths about careers. Mm. Um, for example, from the village I come from, <laughs> I would say where mm. most of the people graduate high school and there are these traditional courses that they think they're supposed to get into. For um, example? For example, back then there was a whole lot of people getting into teaching, just teaching, yeah. Mm. And then it was acceptable for women to just get directly into nursing, mm. you know, without, and in many areas in this country, I've come to understand they're not exposed to the available, the wide range of careers available. So because they have no information, they end up going to those acceptable traditional courses that have been passed down 
every generation. Yeah? So in career guidance, you try and expose, sensitize the prospective students who are going to higher education on what exactly they can go into. Tell them in this area, if this is your strength, you can pursue this. If this is your weakness, you can pursue that. Yeah. You know, talking of careers, huh? mm -hmm. career counseling, and the example you've given of what are referred to as, as traditional career choices, would you say that the role models that they see, meaning when somebody looks at the community they come from, or the environment in which they live, mm -hmm. or the social setting, that the people they see and the careers that these people represent yes. acts as the first introduction they have to p the possibility of careers that somebody can pursue? That is exactly what I'm saying. Um, for example, you come if you're coming from um, maybe a, a lal, let me put it as a story. There's a time um, NIT is in building and construction and digital design courses. So you find someone walks in with their uncle and their dad who's in construction, somewhere in construction, and they say, um, we want this guy to take quantity surveying. Okay, at that point you sit at the front office, mm. you look at the results slip, and the results slip indicates that they have an E in mathematics. An A. E. E, e. e for elephant. Meaning they're not doing very well there. Mm. Exactly. And what is quantity surveying? Measurements and costings. How would you push a student who clearly is not strong in, in math. mathematics to go and do measurements and costings? Yeah? There are many, many other areas under that umbrella of construction that he can add value in, even if it's to follow in the footsteps of whoever they are, they are, they are looking at their, their, as their mentor. Yeah? So the career, the career guidance comes in whereby you now start to explain to the student and to the people who are bringing him in, who want them to walk in their shoes, that this is going to be a time bomb. Yeah? But does it also not point to the, 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 these escorters of the students, the ones who bring them in, mm -hmm. does it also not point to them not having received this very thing that you're now trying to introduce the students to? Because if they had that knowledge mm -hmm. or if they had interacted with that knowledge, mm -hmm. then perhaps they would have pursued this matter in a different way. Exactly. Mm. That, uh, that leads me back to what I call exposure. Mm. Like if you're closed-minded and all you want is succession in your, maybe your business, your, 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 your endeavors, and you're pushing someone to go into that line. Yeah? But things are starting to change a lot. In the last four or five years, we've seen a trend whereby it's the students mm. who are guiding the, the mentors, the parents, the guardians on what they want to do. Mm. I had an interaction with um, a parent at one of our parents' symposium who, was, who told me they had panicked a lot. It's a bishop from Kakamega who told us that they, their son told them they had seen a course on Instagram offered in Nairobi mm -hmm. and they wanted to enroll and he was grounded course, about it. course in? animation and digital media design. Mm -hmm. So this woman was like, oh my God, my son wants to leave the village to come to Nairobi to draw cartoons. <laughs> yes? Okay. According to them, they, they, are very, they were very myopic <laughs> about the situation. <laughs> Fast forward, after the graduation, the parent was very, very exposed and happy that this is a leading graphic designer in one of these leading media stations, yeah? So it only, it, it, it takes... It, 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 it takes so much to understand, yeah? Mm. And it also takes some, some kind of grounding for someone to push. But also if there was more initiative in giving people exposure, even, this, um, even to churches, even to social halls, even to the villages, wherever these people are, and tell them mm. of what is available out there for students, then maybe we not be in a position where students are being pushed to pursue courses that they are not passionate about, which has its cons, of course. Is it the same today as it was, say, 40 years ago with students? You could say 40 years ago, well, no 
deep internet penetration, but no yeah, internet. Yeah. I understand. Right now, there's internet. Right now, there's a lot of uh, exposure on media. Mm. Um, students who are coming into school, maybe they're interacting with other students who are not in the same from the same village as them, so they are sharing information. Is it? Would you say it's the same in terms of lack of awareness of the opportunities mm. in life? I wouldn't think uh, it was the same back then. I think back then people went for what was available. There was this thing about you clearing high school and having made your choices and you you picked um the first the first three options of the courses you want to do mm. and what job throws you away is what you go for. Mm. That was a trend. Yeah. And it got to a point where someone will do maybe community development for for three years straight, four yep. years. Yep. And then later on realize this is not my dream. After maybe toiling for a couple of years, now you go back. After now the private sector came in and there were many other options of part-time learning and all that. Mm. You now go and pursue what you perceive mm. as your dream. Yeah. You know, we've had this conversation even with other people, like um, with the CEO of the Kenya Universities and Colleges Placement System mm -hmm. Service yeah. and asking, by the time you're asking students to choose their preferred courses, has anybody explained to them what options are available? Have they had, do all students in our secondary schools from Form 1 all the way to by the time they're getting to Form 4 actually have this exposure? From your experience dealing with post-secondary students, mm -hmm. do they, are you saying that they actually come in there green, they don't have exposure, they have not had this kind of interaction, this kind of conversation mm -hmm. with career coaches, with uh, people who would advise them on available options what i know for sure is that even at the moment kuccps as much as they don't play they, they don't list the private colleges um they work with particular entities that go around the country mm. to even remote areas to sensitize students about um about the courses available the careers available for mm. them it's up to now these institutions of ours to partner with them to now dig deep and reach out to students and wherever they are, whatever demographics, whichever area, mm. to now sensitize them, give them information, empower them about what they would like to do. At some point, um, I visited a school in, in Moranga and we were trying to explain the courses that we offer and there, were, there was this, they were shying off. Mm. When you come back to meet, there's something like there are so many myths about entry requirements. You go to a school and you ask about things like architecture and people freeze. Yeah. Because there's that mentality of um, if I don't, if I have not taken physics and I'm not very good at mathematics, I don't qualify. If there are people, if there were activations out there, strong activations showing people that they're different curriculums. Of course, they're curriculums that require someone to have physics and particular cluster subjects. But also, for example, the NEC curriculum, Diploma in Architecture, does not require anybody to have, um, to have um, you only require an aggregate of a C minus. Mm. That is not known to many people. So people also, like students in many areas do not know that you can take progressive courses. For example, to take uh, a course in civil engineering, you don't have to, to go to, to uni immediately. You don't have to start with... You can start with a certificate, go to diploma level, go to your undergrad, and then postgraduate level. So if, this, if these things were rampantly being done, then maybe we'd be looking at a different situation. But I'm so happy that nowadays there are so many, so, there are so many efforts going around. I'm seeing so many career fairs, so many expos, exhibitions... Schools are opening doors to um, career, uh, ca career guidance opportunities. Mm. So maybe with time, it will be a different situation altogether. You know, there's this level. The level we are having this discussion yeah. at is where one is still in the process of trying to acquire the technicalities of a career. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then there are those who actually have a career. Mm. And then having acquired this career, you're beginning to ask yourself whether really this career <laughs> is really <laughs> what you ought to really have taken mm -hmm. yes. and what you really can do with yourself going forward. Yeah. Now, <laughs> career coaches like yourself, mm -hmm. what do you do for people who already have a career? Mm -hmm. Okay, They're getting along with it. 
where do you fit in what is it that you do so that people can, can luckily either improve on what they have mm -hmm. whatever it is that they need to do mm. yeah okay good question um in such a scenario, for example, you've done your higher diploma or your, your degree or your master's in something else, you're a banker, maybe, and you think I am into interior design. Mm. There's something we call professional certificate courses. You just walk into an institution. For example, you have something called a professional certificate in interior design, only nine months of part-time learning. You don't have to quit your job. Mm. You just have to make time in maybe a Saturday, a full day, because, of course, it's a very practical program. You have to identify which area you want to go into and look into getting a professional certificate program, which you can always go and practice in. Yeah. How about the, those cases where somebody went into college, mm -hmm. they've come to NIT, mm -hmm. they were enrolled for a certain program, mm -hmm. and at that point they were feeling, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And then... Two, three years down the road, they feel this is not my thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. They haven't graduated. Mm -hmm. They haven't finished. Mm -hmm. They have spent two years of their parents' money yes. in this thing. Yeah. And now they're feeling, nah. They're not feeling this nah, thing. Nah, yeah, I don't thing. feel no. it. Yeah. yeah. The beauty about, um, for example, Nairobi Institute of Technology <laughs> is that we are... A small umbrella of courses. We, we are only in building and construction and digital media. Mm. So, for example, if you are taking um, architecture and you're thinking it's very technical for you, in your second year of learning, you realize, I, no, 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 structures don't work for me like this. You're able to get credit transfers. Maybe you'll join interior design Excuse at the me, same what level. What are credit transfers again? You're exempted, the units you have taken. Mm. Most, of this, uh, most of these courses mm. in this sector the units are shared. For example, the first semester you will do communication skills. The same, the same person in, in architecture will do the same thing. Mm. Entrepreneurship, you'll have done the same thing. There's something called studio, architectural, architectural communication. You'll have all done the same thing. Mm. By the time you want to transfer, when you get to the third, um, to the fifth semester, that's when you start specializing in the areas. Maybe as an interior designer, you start into fittings, furnitures, um, aeration, acoustics, and something like that. But in architecture, now you get into the depth of structures. So if you think it's very complicated for you, you now get exemptions on this other area and venture into interior design. And voila, you graduate on the same level and you're interior designer, the other person is an architect. Same civil engineering and quantity surveying. Now convince the father and uncle mm -hmm. who brought this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two years ago, uh -huh. all right? Yes. And they have gone through heaven and earth yes. to actually pay the school fees for these two years. Mm -hmm. And then the person is saying that, no, 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 I want to shift. Even mm -hmm. as they transfer credits, mm -hmm. they are not transferring those two years. We've, we bumped into such scenarios there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then they don't want surveying. Then they want yeah. dress yeah, making. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But that, that is a parent who wants uh, to live their dream through their child. And, and at the point... Mm -hmm. At, at, at the point this student is, a semester four student, knows exactly. You take your time. That is why um, there's, a, there's a whole team to speak. You gently speak to them about it. You show them the progress of the student. Tell them the weakness. Tell them the strengths. And how okay. they're under one umbrella and there's nothing to lose. I like what you're saying. But then, do you have an opportunity when the student first joins and they've been brought by the father and the uncle and the mm -hmm. three aunties, mm -hmm. do you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to actually walk them through this course that they feel the child wants to take and what the possibilities are? This very conversation, mm -hmm. instead of semester four, mm -hmm. do you have that opportunity to have it on that day, one when they come? I've been waiting for that question. Yes, 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 and yes. You've been waiting? I've been waiting <laughs> for that. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. To all of yes, them. yes, <laughs> yes, and yes. Uh -huh. Um, sometimes parents look at it uh, from a financial point of view. They want to just, the student has qualified for a diploma program, I want them to join. But when you convince them on the pros and cons, there's something we call exploratory courses. Yeah? So you explore for three months courses under this umbrella. And there are different sessions of every different course. For example, this week, you, you'll get into a class of architecture, mm. next week QS, next week civil engineering, the other week digital media design. So that way at the end of the three months, the student can know for sure 
that I'm walking into this. And at that point, you can even walk them into classrooms of senior classes. You know, they mm. know the expectations of the course. Mm. They know what they are walking themselves into. So by the time they're getting to semester four, to say that they were not aware is going to be a hoax. And also there's something called a foundation program. Yeah, you take a foundation course. Mm. The first part, you're not satisfied. You're not sure you want to do the course. You take the second part. After successful completion, you go to the diploma program that you want. So these ideas of people dropping out at semester four level are mostly those ones who are pushed. You have a thorough push. Mm. You don't want to disappoint. You don't want to look like you're, you're retaliating. So you go ahead and do it. Or maybe you don't know your strengths and weaknesses and discover at that stage. And that's normally just sad. Let's take a break at this note. At uh, half past nine, this is Kenya's biggest conversation. Aseka Aswani is a career coach. She's also the dean of students at the Nairobi Institute of Technology. This is the one, uh, uh, what's that road called? Westlands Road. Westlands Road. Plot number 10. <laughs> yes. Plot 10. <laughs> 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 so, <Yeah. laughs> these are the ones in plot 10 yeah okay we're talking about the myths that are there surrounding certain career choices and we want to hear that from her asaka you know about uh, show marks yes she knew yeah of course you teach people in graphic design and also media stuff you i also don't teach but i no no i mean you you yeah. you mm you guide students who are taking these courses yes. this is the situation room the only way to start your day we are trying to bust the myths regarding certain career choices what are some of those career choices as one for the last years that you've been a career coach that you've seen people come with certain misconceptions or mm -hmm. certain thoughts about a e career mm -hmm. yeah mm. like a year back India, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of them are sometimes gender biased or some basic misconceptions. Um, like we were just saying a few minutes ago uh, about, about this idea that men are not supposed to pursue nursing. That was very backward. It was in the past. Like more than a decade ago when I joined NIT, the ratio of ladies and gents in a construction class construction i mean in a civil engineering class country surveying class architecture class there were maybe three or four ladies and up to 14 15 17 gentlemen over the years with all the sensitization and the understanding that what a man can do <laughs> woman can do better <laughs> as we speak okay. it is more than just balanced. You can get into an architecture class and find 17 ladies and 13 men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I walk into um, our masonry and plumbing workshops mm -hmm. and you're wowed by how the only way you tell that this is a lady is by their physique. Mm -hmm. They are working. There's no, there's no fear of getting their hands dirty. So this misconceptions about even these ideas of um, a while back, you'd never dare tell your folks, oh, I want to be a DJ. Yeah? Mm. It'd be like, Mama, you want to kill me <laughs> before my days? <laughs> like, have I taken you through school, sold my cows, that you go and spin a... Just something. A disc, some, some, something. You're, you're playing music. Yes. Don't in, we have enough batteries on this radio? And <laughs> in, a, in a bar. <laughs> in a bar. And even, <laughs> even night, more so yes. ladies. Mm. Like you'd get into entertainment and then they consider you a pariah in society. Yeah, but that has changed with time. And so, so glad that this is changing and guys are being open-minded about um, not uh, focusing on particular genders or traditions when it comes to careers. What do they give credit to for this? Um... Education, really. Education and, 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 and the kind of growth going on, not even in the Western world, like um, the idea that people have proven the odds, have beat the odds. Someone has become a DJ and become more successful than that doctor who used to kneel, used mm. to kneel to, you mm. know. Like a, a plumber is making it. Right now, these technical courses, this vocational these Tibet courses are more sought after. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's no need to 
not really a need, but you're not shunned upon when you go and take a, a what a, a plumbing certificate course, a mm. masonry certificate course, mm. just because at the end of the day, it can only take maybe nine nine months of good financial skills and mm. saving up, then you become the employer. It's not about employability anymore. But do you, if you look at the thinking behind the courses that we are speaking of mm -hmm. and the narratives that follow these courses, mm -hmm. is it that people didn't want to take the courses or is it that we valued courses based on the financial rewards we thought were associated with them? Mm. Yes, because of the, the prestige. Is mm. it the service that it provided or is it the money that is attached to the course? I think it will be the misconception of the prestige behind it and then just wanting to be that person, you know, like... Um, <laughs> you know, this prestige issue mm -hmm. is, is not an individual issue. It's a society mm. issue. Societal, yeah. I mean, so to imagine you have gone for, you know, this... Uh, dowry, whatever, and this other family has come and you're introducing <laughs> family members. Oh, you need Palamba. Oh, you need Mason. Oh, you need Pilot. <laughs> and then the other side, Sandra <laughs> says, Oh, you need Pilot. Oh, you need Daktari. And on your family side, <laughs> oh, you need Palamba. Oh, you need Chazanga Tiles. Oh, you need Chazanga DJ music <laughs> party <laughs> club. How's that going to play out? <laughs> <laughs> right now, yes. uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, for as long as you know the reward behind it, and um, I, I doubt, I doubt. Um, right, right now it's about um, the big names. It's just about how much you're you're cashing in on and how you're making a change and your role in society. Mm. And right now it's even. It's very even for everybody. The plumber makes the same contribution as that doctor. Mm. You, 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 you're saving your. Your, your small rooms as much as you're saving okay. lives. Let me take you a little further back into history. You work in a school. Yes. Okay? Yeah. It's an institute. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there was a time when teachers were considered the most valuable and most prestigious people in society. Hello. Why was it so? They were considered the most educated. Mm. Yes. And that education was prestigious. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. That glory and that sheen mm. reduced with the time mm. so now being a malimu <laughs> sour too <laughs> <laughs> being a malimu is still not sour too because they still serve believe me yes. that's the point yeah. the view, the, the view the, the, yeah. the, 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 that's why i asked that initial question about what it is because yeah. the role has not been diminished yes the yeah. importance of that role has not been diminished but the value but the so, yes, mm. yes 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 the yes because it's like with every career we quantify it yeah, yeah. Mm. what is the monetary value mm. at the end of it which is sad I, it is tragic actually yes and if you look at the societal reward for instance mm. let's look at security policemen mm. yeah look at the role they have mm -hmm. look at how we reward them yeah. and look at where we place them mm -hmm. and historically mm. you are a policeman you are you joined the army when some of these other courses that require you to actually pass an exam <laughs> don't say that <laughs> that's why yeah. i said historically <laughs> uh -huh, yeah okay yeah but you think that is bad to become a pastor priest join a <laughs> college when uh, these other ones didn't work <laughs> oh gosh historically yeah uh. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so when somebody mm -hmm. was a pastor, you knew, okay, here, unduga le le mewa, sawa, akini, mungu le, mungu le mone, kuna kose le patikana. Wacha tumsaidia. Now, uh -huh. <laughs> when you run, you are a dean of students. Mm -hmm. You have a huge responsibility. How do you help change some of these narratives and some of these? Because this is the thinking that people come into the college with, even as students. Mm. Those who bring them in are the ones who are the custodians of these perspectives and these views. Mm -hmm. How do you help change so that the next generation, mm -hmm. when they go through your institute and they, at the end of it, mm. you not only have somebody who's qualified in the courses that are being offered, but you have somebody who has actually changed the way they look at life. Yeah. 
Um, you start very diplomatically. Yeah? You counsel mm. the people bringing the students. Mm. You tell them the eventualities mm. if they if they push. Yeah. Mm. Um, back to a story. There's a parent who brought in a student, very focused, paid a whole year of fees mm. for a particular course in our in our yeah. institution. Mm. Second semester, this student is like, no, this is your program. He opened a butchery at um, with the rest of the fees, mm -hmm. upper city market. That is not my calling. The retaliation is just wild. The <laughs> your your pesa fees, your pesa fees, and auza nyama na na tengeza profit a good one. Mm -hmm. Even at the, at the point where they came to realize they are coming to the graduation <laughs> and there's a whole chain of butchers, this guy is thriving in, they realize once they retaliate, I like the youth. So did he graduate? He did not graduate. He didn't attend classes. He didn't attend classes at yeah, all. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a cash that was coming used to in. Give that him was, cash. Yes, yes. Yeah. And also, you when you look at a class. entrepreneurship as a course. Sorry? You didn't give him entrepreneurship. We don't <laughs> offer that. Sorry. And then you look at a scenario whereby. Um, a student, um, a student comes in, mm. and they they are not passionate about something. You guide them; they refuse. Um, they, they they refuse to to hear you out. What normally happens as an adult, for as long as you're over eighteen, mm. what happens is you you flop, you flop. Then the there's the the what the um, dropout levels are very very rampant. So you start with a class of thirty five, mm -hmm. you graduate fourteen, yeah. So you actually take these guardians and parents through all these things. Mm -hmm. That is why the expos and exhibitions are very available for both parents and students. And we, we encourage students to come with their parents. That way, when you're coming to understand a program you want to take, you'll be able to understand mm. what exactly. And you can also sell the idea to the parent. This weekend, we have something called an open day mm -hmm. available for any prospective student, any parents who are looking into courses in construction and digital design. Mm -hmm. What we do is we take students' projects, display them beautifully and have the students themselves walk the prospective students through the projects. Yeah? That way you'll have an understanding from semester one to semester six. Mm. This is the course I want to do. This is what is available. This is the fee requirement, the entry requirement. If you come with your parent to something like an open day, mm. If they are not sold by the end of it, then there's a problem. What happens in that open day? Because this is a time when you're introducing somebody to all these other options. Yes. And you're not only introducing the student. Yeah. You're also introducing mm -hmm. the parents, the guardians, the adults. Yes. So what happens? Walk us through. So we've checked in. This Saturday we are coming um, to, to the open day, Saturday 15th of April. Yes. Between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, let's say we come at 12 p.m. Yes. Uh -huh. Coming at 12 p.m. is okay because it's a walk-in, walk-out. You don't have to be there by, by 10 o'clock. You will not miss anything. See, we speech. have lots of ushers. We have okay. lots of staff happy, ready, happy, and able to help. Yeah? So when you walk in, for example, you introduce yourself. Mm. How did you hear about us? What are you interested in? Even before you know what you're interested in, we'll walk you through everything that's available. Like I had mentioned earlier, it's all under one umbrella. Mm. Design and just design. Either digital design or building design. Yeah. So we'll walk you through the entry requirements, um, what um, the expectations are. We show you projects you can do in semester one. This is semester two. That's a senior project. And all this time, you're not getting it from us, the lecturers or the staff. It's the students you're asking questions. Mm. You're interacting with someone like yourself. So the who is doing, it's an exhibition by students. By students. Okay. Of students' projects. The staff are only there to help to give clarifications of questions that maybe might be too tough mm. for the students to answer. Mm. And when they do this, like even this exposure, like I had said, this, this is the same exposure that gives the students exhibiting these projects. For example, if I'm a contractor, I might walk in there and see a, uh, and see a, a prospective employee that way you identify mm. the people you can work with and you see the quality of work mm. that your the students are producing and i would doubt that any parent who really really wants to support a child's dream and sees the quality of the work going around will be able to refute them the chance you know these tivet courses are very hands-on yeah like now looking at your courses mm -hmm. in building and uh, digital design mm -hmm. it's a very practical course very, very very how much time is taken in school how much time is taken in practical and how much of internship and uh, and, and such are you offering 
All right. We have some. We have modular courses, and we have um, other courses that I that are examined termly here. Yeah? Every course has termly exams, but there are those that are examined. The neck courses are examined modular. Mm. They are, they have modular exams. The much time they take, the only um sh uh, the only um, what part time course we have are the professional courses. The ones that we we're talking about earlier mm. about someone who wants to change a career wants to do a professional course. Yeah. Every other course is full time. Because it's something called, like I mentioned, a studio. A studio is weighted as four units. Mm -hmm. So you, in fact, in IT is open 365 days a year. Because students even spend nights working and working mm. on drawing tables and interacting. Because an architect would want to consult with an, a quantity surveyor and, and an interior designer mm. and a civil engineer while working together. Mm. That way, they spend... <laughs> literally the whole week and they were even open during the weekends mm. in doing their work our calendars are, our timetables run from seven o'clock to six o'clock mm. yes so, but how much of that how much of this time are they spending mm -hmm. in industry in workplaces apprenticeship and such um at the end of every module for example in architecture after the third semester you go for three months as you have done your your neck exams, you go out for three months in a related field. You will not do architecture, then go to a barber shop and, and in turn, of course. And there are supervisors mm. who come and then check out your work and then follow up on how you're doing and we demand feedback. That way, at the end of the program, you give out quality graduates in the field. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's really like our t student t tutor ratio in every class of 35, there are like five studio masters. Those are the ones that you pick your five students or your four students that you follow up through the entire program. Mm. That way, it's very, very, it's very, very hard to lose sight of them along the way. And also doing the courses and being mentored by the same people who are teaching you. Mm. In an interior design class, we're told by an interior designer. So by the time you're, you're, you're due for attachment, unless you have very work projects, they normally just come in and grab them and... You don't even need to seek attachment yourself. Mm. Yeah. Let me understand. When you say you choose your students and you walk with them, mm -hmm. just walk us through this walking with them. Okay. In a setup, um, in a studio setup, maybe where I have 35 students and I have five studio masters, every student has their own capabilities. There are those who are a bit maybe slower than others. Maybe there are those who are shy. Maybe I come out very strongly to you. You need a, a bit, even when you're interviewing the tutors, we give different options. I will give a toned down person. I will give a very high <laughs> person, someone who can, a patient person, mm. one who, there are those who wants to go, students who want to go ahead of the class. You also give that kind of character. That way, if you're shy towards maybe Latif, you will not mm. be shy towards Aswani, assuming we have two different characters here. Mm. Yeah? So that way, in a class, and we have an open door policy. Even after a classroom, you can follow them to their to their boardrooms and ask questions and follow up. Yeah, okay. that way, um, nobody is left behind. And the beauty about the projects, the the courses that we do, they are marked weekly. Yeah. So the grading for week one and the grading for week two up to week twelve are what are going to comprise of your marks mm. so it's not so one you have huge time exam yeah so you, ha you have time to improve you consult so continuous assessment continuous assessment yeah and that way you, you you can be able to know where you're making a mistake even if i tear your papers in a particular pinup you have the entire weekend to make amends and pin up on wednesday and make yes now these are technical courses that you yeah. offer mm -hmm. attachment how do you work out the attachments and how do you determine which student goes to which institution mm -hmm. and for how long do they have them and how frequently do they have these attachments? Uh, in one, for example, uh, during, uh, during the entire session of one diploma, you, you must have... How long is the diploma? Two and a half years. Okay. You okay. must have gone for six months industrial attachment. Six? Six months. At six once months. or Not at in once. Installment. Three months, go back. Of course, you have to learn and go in put more. Mm. Yeah. After maybe three semesters, you go for one attachment, two semesters, another one, then the final semester, then you go into the industry as a graduate, after you graduate. So what happens is we don't seek attachment for our students. What we do is expose them to the possibilities. 
we don't have them sit in, 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 in class the entire time and draw. We take them to sites. We bring um, external examiners. Um, we bring experts from the industry. We work closely with guys in the industry. That way, we prompt the students to be very serious with their work. Yeah? If you're producing bad work, you end up struggling. We've never had a scenario where we had more than three or four struggle in a class to get industrial attachment. And when that happens, since we are all under the same umbrella, we try and assist. Okay. Maybe the issue is not normally how they produce work, but maybe their, their self-esteem, how they, 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 their interpersonal skills, mm. something of the sorts. But we, wa we work with them through that journey. And at the end of the day, they all graduate with industrial attachment. What do you do with students who clearly have an interest, mm -hmm. clearly doing their best, but mm -hmm. they're simply not cutting it? We advise them accordingly. Um, as the Dean of Students, in charge of Students Affairs, when a tutor notices that Amejaribu, Kingereza, Kiluya, Kijaluo, Ikondani yake, lakini ya Ikondani yake, lakini, Haibambi, it's not, <laughs> it's not working out at that point. What happens is, you you just you you walk them through other options mm. in the same areas maybe you're an art student assuming because you can draw you can take architecture or interior design we guide you through mm. what else you can do and what you can pursue that is a bit gentle and within your scope mm. and we happily see them off conclusion yes um your students graduate with diplomas yes and certificates yes what kind of recognition do they get like uh, architects do they get recognized by the architectural association by the national construction authority by mm. the engineers board for the engineers for architecture students and civil engineering students country surveying students um by the time they sit exams with borax they have already completed the program but they are students members of these associations mm. right um what happens is the, um, once they complete their diploma level, mm. they are able to get exemptions, credit transfers. So you don't just come out of the diploma and start from, from year one when you go to, to a bachelor's program. Mm. That way, you, you have not wasted your time. You're progressing in your career. And that is recognized. Yes, that is very recognized. Asante sana. Yeah. Once again, the open day is this Saturday. Um, 15th 15th yes from 10 a.m to 5 p.m yes the main campus is plot 10 westlands road, westlands road. road. yes yeah <laughs> the nairobi institute of technology thank Asaka. you so thank much you for, for having me us.